Yeah, we expect the, uh, the euro to, uh, to remain under pressure. And we, in fact, have a forecast for euro dollar to head down into the 136 uh, area by the, uh, the end of the year. Overall, the problems within the eurozone, we think, will uh, continue. And the uh, European authorities will, ex will expect those to just to continue to respond to the problems as they arise. And until we see a, a longer term agreement, until we see the European authorities able to put in place a framework to deal with these uh, problems uh, before they uh, arise, then I think the euro is uh, going to continue to remain extremely, uh, extremely vulnerable. What kind of time scale would you put on that agreement? Because it seems like we've been waiting all summer. Yes, the important thing to, to factor in here is the German Constitutional Court hearing, which is currently taking place. Now, the German Constitutional Court is looking at whether the current bailout packages we see are in fact in breach of the uh, EU constitution and uh, whether these kind of pack packages can take place. Now we expect them to, to rule later on uh, this year and to although likely rule that uh, this kind of rescue package can go ahead we expect them to put in place far more uh, stringent uh, uh, conditionality uh, to these agreements. That will make Germany's negotiating position actually far more difficult and is likely to delay the, uh, the process with regards to putting in place this longer term plan that uh, Europe needs. And speaking of slow legal processes, we've obviously got the issues in the US at the moment which have been weighing on the dollar but are they going to continue to do so or is this just something that needs to be worked out and will be over in a few weeks time? Yes, as far as uh, the US is concerned, uh, fiscal issues there are very much uh, in the, the spotlight and uh, we believe that uh, an, an agreement with regards to the, uh, the budget uh, plan and the raising of the, the, the debt ceiling will be reached, although it uh, will likely go to the, uh, to the very uh, last minutes given the, uh, the politics uh, involved. But I think uh, an agreement will eventually uh, be reached and I think the, the dollar will continue to be uh, relatively well supported, particularly in an environment where risk aversion is likely to remain high and we continue to see asset market uh, volatility. With the risk aversion we have been seeing, we've been seeing a lot of flows towards the Swiss franc. We keep hitting record after record against the dollar, but with the euro, where are we going to go? Could we hit parity? Or? I think we are going to see a euro Swiss um, continuing to, to move lower. We have a forecast of 113 for the end of this, uh, this year. The flows into the uh, Swiss franc from the uh, periphery of Europe, I think, are going to continue until we see some kind of longer-term plan being put in place for the, uh, for the Eurozone, which then starts to restore confidence in the, uh, the European uh, financial and uh, banking uh, system. But uh, overall, I think um, the, uh, the Euro-Swiss will, until then, remain under, some pre under pressure. I believe that there's probably little the SMB can uh, do with regards to the current uh, Swiss franc uh, strength, uh, despite their renewed um, concerns which have been uh, raised uh, recently, given their past experience at intervention, I wouldn't expect them to come into the, uh, to the market. So I think Swiss franc strength is going to continue. With the SMB, is it because they don't feel it's worth, it, is it too expensive for them to intervene or is it just not worth them doing it? Is it not causing enough damage to the Swiss economy for them to want to intervene? Yeah, the Swiss economy has performed extremely well despite the strength of the, uh, the Swiss franc uh, so far. Exports have until now held up very well. But looking at the most recent comments coming from the Swiss authorities, coming from the Swiss exporters, it, it does seem to be that the current strength of the Swiss franc is now having an impact. So hence these renewed concerns are now being, uh, being raised. But I think uh, overall, given the size of the Swiss uh, Swiss bank uh, uh, balance sheet following the last rounds of intervention that makes it very difficult for them to come back in and to carry out uh, further, further action. So at this point I would not be expecting the, uh, the SMB to take any action. And moving to economies that aren't necessarily doing so well at the moment, the UK, where's the sterling going to go? We've seen so many, such a large amount of rate expectations priced out now. Where now? Where next? I think sterling is also extremely vulnerable. Probably sterling is one of the currencies which hasn't reacted to the most recent shift in fundamentals. We've seen a very sharp deterioration in the UK fundamentals. We've seen rate expectations move extremely sharply over the course of uh, recent uh, months with 
the market not pricing in the rate hike now in, in the UK until well into the second half of uh, next year. But despite that move, sterling has shown a very little sign of reaction. But now as the data starts to deteriorate once again, now as the fiscal tightening in the UK starts to bite, I would expect sterling to come back under pressure and uh, in particular we'll be looking for cable to move uh, quite sharply lower. So who are the currency winners at the moment? Who sh where's the money going to be made? As far as the, um, the currencies which are going to be supported, I think we are going to see the uh, surplus cur currencies remain very well supported. So the, the Swiss franc, as we mentioned, is going to be uh, very well supported. The Japanese yen will also remain uh, supported, although there's probably a very little downside for dollar yen. I'd be looking at euro yen to move, uh, to move lower. And the dollar itself, I think, is also going to uh, gain support and uh, sustain a recovery into the end of the year.